Hey guys! So ships have been helping humans cover significant distances on water since ancient times. Over the past millennia, humanity has made significant advancements in shipbuilding. A vast number of container ships and tankers have been created. The entertainment and leisure industry has also reached new heights. Enormous cruise liners are being constructed, growing larger and more luxurious with each passing year. In today's video, you'll get to see all these huge ships of various classes, from aircraft carriers to cruise liners and icebreakers. As of today, the primary global trade system is shipping. More than 90% of all goods transported between countries on the planet are carried by water, and their volume is increasing, which means that there is a growing demand for transportation means capable of carrying the largest volume of cargo in a single voyage. This is more cost-effective, environmentally friendly, and efficient. These ships are divided into two major groups based on the type of cargo – dry bulk carriers and tankers. Dry bulk carriers transport dry goods, such as grain, coal, and so on. These ships are called bulkers. Container ships transport cargo in containers. There are also multi-purpose ships that can carry different types of cargo at the same time. Tankers transport liquids or gases. Tankers' holds can be filled with oil, chemicals, or any other liquid. Until 2009, the world's largest tanker was the Nock Nevis. Today, only its anchor remains. It's kept in the Hong Kong Maritime Museum. This tanker had a complicated history and changed ownership multiple times. It was designed and built by a Japanese company in 1974. Throughout its history, it underwent several modifications to increase its capacity. After reconstruction, this monster of a ship had a displacement of 657,000 tons when fully loaded, with a length of 458 meters. This huge ship could reach a maximum speed of only 13 knots and required a minimum of 10 kilometers to come to a stop. Therefore, to bring the tanker to an oil terminal, it had to be towed very slowly. It isn't hard to imagine the potential consequences of a maneuvering error for a ship of such size. When fully loaded, the tanker submerged nearly 30 meters underwater. Due to its dimensions, the tanker couldn't pass through the Suez and Panama canals, and it was prohibited from crossing the English Channel, as there was a high risk of running aground. Today, some of the largest tanker ships that can be found on the world's oceans are South Korean tankers built in the early 2000s at the Daewoo Shipyard. This company, along with the other two members of the Korean Big Three, Hyundai and Samsung, doesn't only manufacture automobiles and household supplies, but is also involved in shipbuilding. Four tankers were built for transporting crude oil from Persian Gulf countries. These ships' total length is 380 meters, and their width at the widest point is 68 meters. The tankers are painted white to minimize heating in the sun. Three of them do not go out to sea as of today, but serve as coastal oil storage facilities. No matter how enormous and capacious super tankers may be, they are not the longest ships. 400 meter long container ships surpass them in this regard. Several of such ships are typically built based on a single project. There are currently several competing projects in the world. The newest among the giant container ships is the CMA CGM, which embarked on its first commercial voyage in early February 2018. Its closest competitor is the MSC Vessel, built by Samsung Heavy Industries. The ship is 400 meters long and is the world's first container ship capable of accommodating 24 rows of containers in width, thus increasing its capacity. The use of containers significantly simplifies and reduces the cost of both shipping goods by sea and transporting them from the ship to the end consumer. This is how most of the goods from Asia are delivered to Europe and America. However, despite their large size, the weight of the cargo carried by container ships is only half of that carried by tankers because the average density of cargo in containers is lower than that of oil in tanker tanks.
Since 2011, Valimax ships have been the largest bulk carriers in terms of length and capacity. These ships are designed for transporting bulk cargo. Most of them are also built in South Korea. They are called Valimax because they were constructed to transport iron ore mined by the Brazilian company Vale in South America to Europe and Asia, mainly to China. In this case, the ship couldn't be built any larger because it wouldn't be able to enter Chinese ports. The ship is 362 meters long, 65 meters wide, and can carry 400,000 tons of cargo. These ships aren't very fast, moving around 28 kilometers per hour. However, speed is not essential for such a bulk carrier. Its task is to get from port to port with minimal fuel consumption. It doesn't require a large crew either. This modern commercial ship has much of its operation automated, so a team of 20 to 30 people is sufficient. A fully loaded ship can only enter two ports in the world, the Ponto de Madeira terminal in Brazil and one in Europe near Rotterdam in the Netherlands, but only during high tide. The ship makes 10 voyages per year between these ports with iron ore cargo. Besides mass-produced or serial tankers, bulkers, and container ships, there are also unique vessels that perform special tasks. For example, the transportation of oversized, large-scale cargo. These are semi-submersible ships with enormous lifting capacity, designed to move large objects, such as other ships and offshore platforms. The ship with the highest lifting capacity today is the Dockwise Vanguard, capable of transporting objects weighing up to 110,000 tons, which is roughly equivalent to 11 Eiffel Towers. Such ships have special ballast tanks. By filling them with water, these ships can submerge deeply while remaining afloat. If, for example, a damaged ship needs to be transported, they go under it and then pump water out of the ballast tanks to resurface. Marine vessels aren't only used for transporting passengers and cargo, but also for construction. The Pioneering Spirit is the largest ship in the world used for transporting offshore drilling platforms and laying underwater pipelines. The ship belongs to a Swiss company, but navigates under the flags of Malta and Panama. Until the end of 2019, the Pioneering Spirit participated in the construction of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline between Russia and Germany. The ship is 477 meters long, 382 meters high, and can reach a speed of 14 knots. Prelude As of today, it is recognized as the largest watercraft in the world. It's not a ship in the traditional sense of the word. Prelude is a high-tech platform designed for the extraction and production of liquefied natural gas, LNG. It is incapable of independent movement and requires special tugs to transport it. The platform is exceptionally stable and can easily withstand severe storms. Prelude is equipped with three 6,700 horsepower engines. The length of the platform is 488 meters, the height is 105 meters, and the displacement is 600,000 tons. The platform is currently located in the Indian Ocean near Australia. The construction and testing took place off the coast of Korea. In one year of operation, the platform produces approximately 3.6 million tons of liquefied natural gas. All 12 existing nuclear icebreakers in the world were designed in the USSR and Russia. For example, the still operating 148-meter nuclear icebreaker Yamal was launched on October 4, 1989 in the Soviet Union. The ship has a double hull made of AK-28 steel. The outer hull has a 5-meter length ice belt with a thickness of 46 millimeters in the ice collision area, while the thickness of the outer hull in the other areas is about 30 millimeters. The hull is covered with a half millimeter layer of special paint to reduce friction. There is a water ballast between the outer and inner hulls. It can be moved to maintain the ship's stability. The ship's hull is divided into eight watertight compartments, and a five-level superstructure is located in the center. 
The ship can break ice while moving both forward and backward. Reversing the engine, i.e., changing the direction of rotation from full speed in one direction to full speed in the other, takes 11 seconds. The propeller weight is 50 tons. However, the largest and most powerful nuclear icebreaker in the world is the icebreaker Arctica. The Project 22220 nuclear icebreakers are the largest and most powerful. They are designed to ensure Russia's leadership in the Arctic and can lead caravans of ships, breaking ice up to 3 meters thick. The icebreaker is equipped with an RITM-200 two-reactor power plant, with each reactor having a capacity of 175 megawatts. The equipment is specifically designed for this nuclear-powered vessel. The ship's two-draft design allows it to be used in Arctic waters, as well as in the mouths of polar rivers. The length of the ship is 173.3 meters, the width is 34 meters, and the displacement is 33,500 tons. In addition to its primary task of escorting trade ships through ice, the icebreaker has also been working as a cruise liner recently. Now anyone can visit the North Pole for around $30,000 to $40,000. During the cruise, the ship offers a restaurant, a gym, a sauna, a swimming pool, a library, a music salon, and satellite television. The largest aircraft carrier in the world belongs to the United States. It is named Gerald R. Ford, in honor of the 38th President of the United States, Gerald Ford. Its construction began on August 11, 2005, and it was launched on November 9, 2013. It was commissioned on May 31, 2017, replacing the previous record holder named Enterprise, which had navigated the waters since 1961 and ended its 50 years service in December 2012. The new aircraft carrier has a displacement of 98,500 tons, which is 20% more than the previous record holder. Its dimensions are 337 meters in length, 78 meters in width, and 76 meters in height. It's comparable to a 35-story building the size of three football fields. Operating the new ship is expected to be cheaper than the Enterprise due to a reduced crew size. The modern aircraft carrier can accommodate approximately 4,500 people. The aviation group includes 90 aircraft, helicopters, and drones. Symphony of the Seas This cruise liner is the fourth ship in the Oasis class and is currently the largest passenger ship in the world. Despite being shorter in length than its predecessor, the Harmony of the Seas, it is distinguished by a record capacity of 1,118 gross tons. The liner is 361 meters long, whereas the Eiffel Tower is 324 meters tall, and the infamous Titanic was only 291 meters long. Its width is 47 meters, and its height is 72.5 meters. The ship can accommodate 6,680 passengers. There are 16 guest decks on board, as well as about two dozen restaurants and 24 pools. There's also a water park, a basketball court, and even an ice rink. The liner operates between major tourist destinations around the world. During the cruise, the travelers visit Spain, Mexico, and Costa Rica. The liner's routes change regularly. The ship sails under the flag of the Bahamas. Well, that's all for today, friends. Smash that like button if you found this video interesting. Let me know what you learned in the comments, and we'll see you next time.